A top story this evening, press ombudsman has ruled that News24 must apologize for misleadingly creating the impression that Professor Chris Malikane favored the taking up of arms to solve the land reforms issue. The ruling by the Ombuds, Johan Ratif, went on to say that the article written by Msini Sifengu says Malikane had warned South Africans to be prepared for the worst of radical economic transformation was to succeed. The article was published on News24 on the 29th of April this year, headlined Prepare for the Worst. Black First Land First, which hosted the Finance Minister's advisor, Professor Chris Malikane, had launched the complaint for the press ombudsman. PLS President Andy Lemotama had complained against the article. The movement says the report was wrong as Malikane was absolutely clear in his rejection of violence. Ngatama also complained that it was shocking to see how the white-owned media blatantly lied about what was said. Well, the press ombudsman, after hearing the arguments of the concerned parties, concluded that the impression that Malikana favoured the taking up of arms to solve the land reform issue misrepresented him, was unfair to him and unnecessarily associated with him, a position which, if taken to implementation, would have consequences too ghastly to contemplate. Well, the ombudsman also decided that it was a serious misconduct and gave the following sanctions. Well, News24 is directed to apologize unreservedly to Malikane in particular and to the public in general for misleadingly and unfairly creating the impression that Malikane favored the taking up of arms to solve the land reforms issue. Well, and now let's take a listen into the actual speech by Professor Chris Malikane, which was misrepresented. So how do you get two-thirds to change the constitution? Because as matters stand, no party commands two-thirds. So you need that unity, whether we like it or not. Right? Otherwise, in order to achieve what we want to achieve, then we go to the, that route. <laughs> yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> But, 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 what, but <laughs> yeah. so me, I don't like work. <laughs> uh, no, I've seen it on TV. This thing is pretty. <laughs> let's, 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 let's first try two thirds. Yeah. Let's try two thirds. Let's try to unite the forces and try two thirds. This, however, is not the first time the publication had to be reprimanded. The press ombudsman early on this year reprimanded the Financial Mail for its coverage of the Denton's report. According to the ombudsman in, the, in its reporting, the Financial Mail had brazenly veered off the South African Code of Ethics and Conduct, resulting in Eskim being cast in a negative light. The ombudsman said that the story had stated that Denton's had raised new questions over Eskim's rationale for load shedding, but it did not balance the questions over the rationale with a reference to what this rationale was. Well, this was found to be in breach of the SA Code of Ethics, which says news shall be presented in context and in a balanced manner. Well, the ombudsman also said that the information about the removal of names from the report was corroborated by the minutes was inaccurate. This inaccuracy was in breach of the code which says the media shall take care to report news accurately. In a third finding, the ombudsman found that an allegation was stated as a fact. This was in breach of the code of ethics which reads the media shall take care to report news truthfully, accurately and fairly. Well, joining me to unpack further details on the story is the National Deputy Coordinator of the Black First Land First, Tandi Swayapi, joining us in studio this evening. A very good evening to you, Tandi Swan. Thank you so much for joining us this evening right here on African News Network. Just start off by giving us your reaction on the recent judgment by the press ombudsman over the News 24 article on Professor Chris Malikani. What does the BLF make of this? Okay, first of all, I would like to say that BLF has won the case against the white-owned media, News24, after BLF has laid a charge with the press uh, ombudsman uh, relating to the ridiculous reporting uh, by the News24 on Chris Maligane uh, statements regarding taking up of arms mm. uh, uh, for economic uh, transformation. Uh, BLF uh, actually is not surprised mm. 
uh, about uh, the fake news that has been uh, 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 running around. Actually, uh, the ruling by uh, Retief is that News24 must apologize to Chris Malikani and mm. to the public at large. And we support that call. And uh, because News24 has misled the nation and unfairly creating an impression mm. uh, that uh, Malikani favored the taking up of arms, mm. uh, uh, to solve the land uh, mm. reform issues, and that was not truthful. Now, looking at the sanction which has actually been delivered or ordered by the press ombudsman, you know, requesting News24 to issue an apology to Professor Chris Manikane, do you think that this is enough? I don't think it is enough because these white media houses have been running a, a propaganda uh, campaigns against uh, so many people and we as the BLF uh, we demand that the white racist DA must apologize to Chris Malikane for calling for his firing after the news had broke out uh, after the day of mm. the uh, of the beat where uh, Malikane was giving his speech uh, to the BLF uh, uh, community. Mm. And also, we are saying as BLF, uh, we know that the white-owned media are manufacturers of fake news. Uh, it's not something that is new. It's been out there. They've been lying time and again and uh, uh, running with stories that are not truthful. And now, even their own ombudsmen uh, 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 can't even protect mm. them anymore on their plantain lies. Now, what do you make of this entire situation? What do you think the main cause, you know, that uh, actually results of certain media outlets, you know, reporting certain news in a very biased manner? What do you think is the main cause? And also, do you think at the same breath, do you think that there's a specific a certain target of people which is, in, which, which is rather being targeted by a certain group of these media outlets? Yes, I think, uh, yes. I think the, the reason that uh, they are running these propaganda campaigns is because they want uh, to, to divert the attention from the real problem, which is white monopoly capital in this country, in South Africa. And then they will run with the propaganda. Mm. And you know, if propaganda is repeated time and again, it becomes truthful in the eyes of, uh, uh, of, the, of the people. And we know that uh, the white media uh, is dominant in South Africa. Most of the media houses are owned by white thieves, uh, like the likes of uh, Johan Rupert. So, mm. SBLF, we know, and we've been saying that, and as we are saying right now, that uh, uh, BLF is actually vindicated. Mm. Now, what do you make of these standards of journalism in South Africa in particular? Do you think that uh, the reportage by certain media outlets and by certain journalists is actually starting to depreciate? And that would you say that politics are actually taking over of newsrooms and media and media outlets? Yes, politics, actually a, a journalist and the media are not free at all to report uh, what they want to report, uh, which is truthful. All the time, the media houses, they will try and cut uh, the truthful uh, version of the news uh, 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 in order to run their own stories, mm. which are always not truthful. Mm. Just talk us through as to how worrying is this and how it actually reflects on the media outlets in South Africa. Uh, we as the BLF, we say uh, we welcome the ruling and we are saying the ruling is uh, actually a victory for BLF. Mm. And we are saying uh, we are vindicated yet again um, uh, that the white-owned media has been running a propaganda against Chris Malikani. Um, uh, because of his position mm. on radical economic transformation. And now lastly, as you wrap up, what do you think are some of the you know, consequences of, of bias reportage on certain people and certain institutions is likely to have on the entire society? I think it is a, a very negative a, a, a thing for media houses to be running a, a propaganda, a, a news, because... A, uh, the black nation won't be education, uh, educated on, on what really is happening out there. Mm. And we want to say that uh, these media houses, uh, they can't assail to the arguments of uh, the professor. Hence, they have uh, uh, distorted and uh, resorted to lying. That is why uh, they have lied, because uh, uh, Chris Maligane's uh, uh, views uh, uh, and arguments mm. uh, uh, are, are way above Yes.
Well, Tanisa, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us right here on Africa News Network. Well, that was representative from the Black First Land First organization, Tandu Sayapi, just unpacking more details on the issue of fake news in South Africa.